Hey everyone, it's Saoirse. It feels like it's been forever since I last talked to you, but it really hasn't. Um, I've just been in a weird mood, I guess, you know, with the year changing and everything. Happy New Year, by the way. How's 2021 treating you so far? <laughs> Let's not get into it. Um, I just wanted to come on and talk to you about my favorite books from 2020. Now, not books that were published in 2020, but books that I read that year. And I read 25 books. That was my goal on Goodreads. And I'd love to hear what your goals are because I see some people on there who say that they're going to read like 150 books. And I'm just thinking, what, what kind of books are you reading that you could possibly do that? Or are you a speed reader? Or do you not do anything other than read? Um, because I mostly just read these days and I still can't crank out more than like 100 pages a day. And that's like really tough for me. Like my eyes are strained. I have a headache by the end of the day. Um, and for the last few months of 2020, I was too depressed to even read at all. So I'm glad I got most of my 25 books done before that. I just wanted to talk to you about 10 of my favorites. And these are not in order of um, like which ones I thought were the best. They're just in the order that I happened to stack them today. So I thought 10 out of 25, um, that should be enough. I don't wanna go over all of them. Ugh, especially cause I can only talk for 25 minutes before my camera shuts off as you may know. So let's just start with what's on top here. And I've done videos for all of these, so I guess I can link them. Um, that would probably be helpful of me. And it's, you can usually tell like which ones are my favorites by whichever ones I do videos for, but that's not always true because I'm trying to do videos on ones that I don't love as much, which pains me because I don't want to talk about them, but I know that's important too. Um, so, first on the stack is The Blurry Years by Eleanor Kreisman. Now, I absolutely loved this one. This is one that I read in like a day, day and a half while I was still in Scotland. I think most of these... If not, yeah, all but one of them I read while I was in Scotland. And um, this was like, you know, beginning of lockdown time, maybe sort of end of the second semester of my, my master's program. And I was basically just sitting in bed all day with my cats reading. And I could not put this down. It is about, um, it's a Florida story. Maybe I should just say that. I don't know if I should read you the, um, the, isn't this good content when I just sit here and read to myself? I don't know if I want to read you all of the, like, what this book is about, but maybe like a little, this is a coming of age story, um, about Callie, who ages from 6 to 18 in this book, um, in her childhood, blah, 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 moving from cars to strangers' houses to the sand-dusted apartments of the tourist towns that litter the Florida coastline. It's a story about what it's like to grow up too fast and absorb too much, to watch adults behaving badly, etc, etc. And I just related to this so much, having grown up in Florida. Even just the cover, it just looks exactly like everything that I knew as a child. Um, and I always really struggled with writing about where I'm from because I found it so boring. Is somebody coming to my door? There are like sounds happening outside um, and I have the window open. Please don't listen to me talk. <sighs> okay, uh, but yeah, I thought my, my hometown and, and my home state, everything was really boring and I just wanted to be away. But then while I was in Scotland reading about Florida, I realized like how bizarre and unique this place is and I guess the rest of the world knows that that's why we have you know the Florida man and um we're just known as having the most ridiculous headlines in the country so I think having a childhood here is is very unique and strange um and I think that Eleanor Kreisman really captured it perfectly I loved it so much and I'm also interested to read um more from this publisher. It is two dollar radio. I just really like the way that they print their books. Like I love the layout of this book, uh, so I want to pick up some more of theirs. On to the next one, and I swear this is not this is not me tooting my own horn or anything, but this is the book that my university published. It's called From Arthur's Seat, a collection of short prose and poetry. So in my creative writing master's program at the University of Edinburgh, we 
publish this. They do it every year. This is volume five. And um, it's all designed, edited, produced by the students. And there were only about 50 of us in the program. And almost all of us worked on it. And almost all of us contributed to it in the writing. So um, I spent so much time you know, worrying about like what piece I was going to submit and editing it and making sure it was okay because I'd never really had my work in print and um, sent out into the world in that way. I've mostly just written stuff online. So it was very intimidating. But then I, I wasn't putting much thought into like, what is everybody else writing? So then when it was published and I got to read through it, I was so amazed by the talent of the people that I was in this program with. I mean, some of these stories, I just finished them and I was like, I, I'm... I'm friends with these people, like I get to go to class with these people and they're so, so skilled and so imaginative. Um, and so yeah, I've showed you this before in another video, but there's my story and I've signed it, of course. That's the most exciting thing, like signing, signing your work. I just never thought I would get to do that, you know. Um, when you're a writer, I tell people it's like trying to make it big in writing is like trying to be a Hollywood movie star. It's it, kind of one in a million, but you have to start small, and so, you know, starting small with a relatively small, a self-published university publication, it's, um, it just looks so professional, and it's so well done, and we, we went over this thing, I was one of the editors for this, and we went over it so many times to make sure that there's no mistakes, and it's just gorgeous, um, the art is done by a student in the program, so I definitely recommend, and I'll link where you can buy this, um, really proud of it. Really, really proud. Lots of great little short stories. Actually, I'm the only nonfiction in there, I think. There's some poetry, and then of all of the prose, um, it's fiction, and, and mine is uh, nonfiction. It's about the trail. The trail, I say that like everybody knows what I'm talking about. Um, the Appalachian Trail, which I through hiked. So I write a lot about that. <laughs> okay, next up is Homebody by Rupi Kaur. And I just recently did a video on this one, so I don't need to spend too much time on it, but this is, I think it's her third collection, because she had Milk and Honey and then The Sun and Her Flowers. Um, <clears throat> so I think this is her only, this is her third published collection. I don't know if she has any secret collections of poetry, but I really enjoyed it. Um, this was one of the, the last ones that I read in 2020. And it's a great book of poetry if you just want to sit down and chill out with a candle and some thoughts, maybe put on some classical music or something, have some hot chocolate, I don't know. It's really beautiful and thought-provoking. And um, as I've said before, like, like really easy to read poetry because it's not, um, it's not using a lot of imagery, like, similes and things that stuff that people would get so intimidated by when um when we talk about poetry people get so intimidated by the idea of like not being able to understand the meaning like what is a poet trying to say well we know exactly what she's trying to say and she says it well so i definitely recommend it next up we have here an unquiet mind by k redfield jameson i talked about this one it was uh, quite a while ago now almost a year Time really flies. How scary is that? And um, this is a memoir. It's by this doctor who, um, she has bipolar disorder, and this is her, um, this is her story of, of her life with it and, you know, being somebody in the medical field um, with a mental illness and how people um, either trust you or don't trust you because you have a mental illness. And it's, it's so, so interesting. I find memoir to be like the most fascinating uh, form of literature because it's, it's a real person telling their story. So I like nonfiction, I'd say generally better than fiction, and memoir is like the height of that because it is coming from that person's mouth, like they can attest to everything that happened in their life, and I really, really think that, that reality is stranger than fiction. Big recommend. Oh, next up we have sort of another memoir. Um, this is I'm a Stranger Here Myself by Bill Bryson. So I read a lot of very dark 
um, morbid, sad things. And Bill Bryson is always this this light for me because he's just so funny and um, has a very specific style of humor. Having um, grown up in Iowa and then moved to the UK, it's this strange hybrid humor that is just, it's so specific, it's so recognizable and like you, you know it's Bryson right off the bat. And this is a collection of columns that he wrote for, was it a magazine or a newspaper, it's something, um, when he returned to America. So he moved to the UK, met his wife, married her, they moved back, um, I think they, I think they first moved back to New Hampshire, so they lived in Hanover, New Hampshire, um, which actually the Appalachian Trail goes through there, and I got to stop there, and it was really cool. Um, but he wasn't living there anymore, he'd already moved back to the UK. But so this was all written um, while he was still living here in the US, and it was all just really funny observations, just hilarious laugh out loud stuff about about America and about like feeling strange and foreign here because he'd been away for so long. If you want to laugh, definitely recommend. And I'm actually reading another Bryson book right now. Okay, The Bell Jar. Now I read this last year, but I also read it years before that. I can't remember exactly when. Um, look how much I- can you see all the little note tabs that I put in it? Um, and this copy I got for university, it was from one of my classes. So, um, because I had a- I have another copy as well. Um, so I didn't feel bad writing in this one. This was my first copy, the one that I read the first time. And this was- I don't even know how I got it, it was a hand-me-down. Um, but yeah, this- should I even say what it's about? I guess some people don't know. Um, it's about this girl, Esther Greenwood, who's working as an intern for a New York fashion magazine in 1953, and she enters into a serious depression, and the book follows that and the repercussions. Um, and it is- it's highly autobiographical. It was originally published under a pseudonym, so that tells you it's very, very autobiographical of Sylvia Plath's own life, and it's very sad, um, difficult to read if you're- if you're in a sad place, maybe- maybe have some Bryson ready to pick you up after. Um, I tend to do that, like, alternate if I'm gonna read something sad, then hopefully have something that is a little more uplifting next time, but it is one of my top- is it four or five favorite books of all time? Um, yeah, it really means a lot to me. Definitely recommend. Um, Helmet by Fiona Mosley. I've got a cat down here going nuts. Um, this one was one of those that I- I like to go to the bookstore and just look at books, judge them by their cover, read a little bit inside, and take it home. So, um, I don't, like, do a ton of research into what should I read next. I, I just go and pick up what I think looks good at the store. And this was one of those, and I really- I just really liked the cover. And you get a lot of thoughts about, like, what a book is going to be, um, from- from the cover, from the style of the book. Like, it has these- and I've done it again, I've forgotten what this is called. Uh, is it Deckled Edges? Where the, you know, where the edges are uneven. Um, and it just seemed really, like, poetic, and it's set in- in Yorkshire. And I'll read- you know, I'll read anything set in Yorkshire. That's where the Brontes lived. <clears throat> so, yeah. I don't want to give away anything about it. Um, but it's about, like, a very unconventional little family. Two kids living with their strange- Father, <coughs> excuse me. It's like the one time I didn't bring my water over here. I'll be fine, I'll get through it, I don't need water. I haven't spoken in like 24 hours. Anyway, recommend. Couldn't really put it down, it was um, really lovely. It's, it's hard to find books, I find now, nowadays, if you will, that are as lyrical and poetic as, say, Victorian literature, which I'm obsessed with. Um, because I think we're kind of taught now as writers to stray from that and to be a lot more sparse with our language. And you know what? Forget that. Write however you want to write. And she did that and it turned out great. I love it. 
Um, next up, I'm just like assessing why all of my books look so damaged um, when they're always in perfect condition and I think it's because when I came back on my flight I had like a whole suitcase full of books and then books kind of shoved into other suitcases um, and they some of them didn't do too well on the journey. But we have here, oh, shocking, shocking condition on this cover. The Body by Bill Bryson. Bill Bryson, you're on here twice. Sneaky. Well, this one, I had to include it because this is exactly what it says it is. It's, it's all about the body and like every part of what is going on inside of us. So very, very nonfiction. Um, but it's all in chapters, the brain, the head, the immune system, sleep, nerves and pain. And it is so enthralling. I, I didn't think that I could get through a like 400 page science book, but man, it's fascinating. I kept reading it like I was reading a mystery novel or something. What is gonna happen next? I, I have to know, like what is going on with this particular organ? No way, are you serious? Like, it's just shocking. If you, you know, you, your only um, experience with biology is your, like, ninth grade biology class, pick this up. It is so thrilling. I just can't, can't recommend it enough. Um, I'm not a scientist myself. Very much a uh, language-oriented person. Um, but it just was so riveting. I'll just keep using different words to tell you how much I liked it and not get anywhere. Anyway, um, the next one is Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. And I have, I have another, I have another copy of this because this is the uh, British one, but I have the American one that my mom picked up for me while I was in Scotland. I don't know where it is. It's, yeah, it's like in a stack that's under some other things up there, so I can't get it out. But this is the British one, and it's the one that um, Stephen Chbosky signed for me when I met him in London. Um, he was promoting this book. It was so cool to meet him, and I talked about that in the in the video on this book. Um, but this book is 700 pages, and like that sounds so intimidating, but it's such a a strange kind of genre like you kind of want to call it horror um it's not like it's not really for kids though the main character is a child so it's really hard to to pin down um in any specific genre and i really admire that because it is so scary as a writer to set out to write a story that you know there's no built-in particular audience for it and maybe he can get away with that because he wrote The Perks of Being a Wallflower and this is his first book in 20 years and he knows, like, people will read it. Um, but he's not, he's not that kind of a cocky person. Like, he's a really, really humble writer and was shocked that everybody wanted to see him in London. Like, all the way in London, he was really humble. Um, so I think he just had this story and wanted to get it out. And that's so important because... I always beat myself up like if I'm writing something and I don't think there's going to be an audience for it I kind of just want to give up and I ask myself why am I doing this nobody's ever going to read it and if they do they're not going to like it and even if 100 people like it well it's never going to be a bestseller and I let that stop me so this is all to say write your crazy story that you've come up with in your brain and stop worrying so much about what's going to happen after you write it and I'm giving that advice to myself right now. Um, but yeah, I should tell you what this is about. Uh, so it's about this boy, um, Christopher. I'm doing this from memory, and this was like a year ago. Uh, this boy, Christopher, who... Um, so there starts to be like supernatural things happening in his life. Um, and it's really up to him to save his whole town and possibly the world. And I don't really want to give away much more than that. And ooh, how exciting. Sometimes in big hardback books, I press flowers. And I just found some flower from Scotland. I remember those are the ones that were um, near my flat. And they were so pretty when they bloomed. Okay, personal moment. Okay, last one is 
Chase Darkness With Me by Billy Jensen. Now, I am a true crime fanatic, a murderino. I'm obsessed. Um, you can see my poster right there is my favorite murder poster. So, um, Billy Jensen was a true crime journalist, and this is all about like how you can solve crimes by using crowdsourcing and like advertising on Facebook, stuff like social media where um, you can advertise to specific places where crimes happened, like people who live in those places, and in that way we can get a lot more information that can lead to the uh, capture of very bad people. So I definitely recommend this. It's so, so interesting to see how... how there's so many weird things going on outside. How um, crime solving has changed so much over the years. Um, if you're not into crime at all, like, fine, I understand, but no, I don't really understand because I'm obsessed. Um, yeah, I could, I just consume so much true, true crime documentaries, podcasts, everything, and, um, as I said before, I think reality is so much more interesting than fiction. I think it's so much scarier, so books like this are perfect for me because I just, I love consuming that, like, what is the worst of humanity? Um, I don't know if it's, it's like comforting to know that there are people who catch bad people, um, if they're, like, that there are ways that we can catch them, um, or if I'm just very morbid, I don't know. But anyway, those are my 10 favorites from 2020. <laughs> I don't even want to say that word, 2020. Um, so let's just hope for a great year this year. Um, I'm trying to read 52 books this year, which I did in 2019, and, um, it was tough. But I was in grad school, and this time I'm not. Um, so it shouldn't be as hard, and I'm actually back into reading, you guys, I'm back. I know I had such a hard time at the end of last year, and I thought, like, I would never read again, and it just seemed so pointless, and it still is, like... I don't know if you have this thought, but when I read, I kind of think, well, what, why am I doing this? Because it's not, I'm a very goal-oriented person, and like, I, I like to work towards something, and this isn't really getting me towards anything, because once I'm finished with the book, chances are I will forget everything that happened in it within a couple of months, probably within a couple of weeks. Um, and it's a strange activity, a strange and unique kind of thing, because once we put it down, it's not in our heads anymore, but while we're reading, we're absorbed in this world. And I've found that in the past week or so when I've been finally diving back into reading, that I've been totally, totally absorbed. And it is finally that escape again that I missed so much because, you know, when you're trapped in such a crappy time as we were all having last year, and you can't escape because your brain isn't letting you use your normal escape. It's a very dark place. So I'm really glad to be reading again. And I hope that you are all um, finding books that you like to not just escape, but to enjoy. And please let me know in the comments what were your favorite things that you read in 2020. It doesn't have to be books. It could be plays or short stories, or poetry, anything. Just let me know what you liked and I will talk to you all next time. Happy reading and happy new year.